What is art? It is a question that's been posed for centuries, possibly longer, and one that continues to obsess us in the 21st century. The digital age, however, has brought new meaning to the idea, allowing artists and entrepreneurs to push the boundaries of how we think about things. And NFTs have opened up a brand new frontier in that push. I'm Forecast's Joel Flynn, and this is Moments in NFT History. Now, thanks to my art teacher mother-in-law, I can tell you with a reasonable degree of certainty that when it comes to art, much like dancing, it's all about movements. NFTs are no different. In the words of the International Contemporary Eden Gallery, that means artists converging with a specified objective and philosophy. And for the crypto art movement, that all began with a frog. Feels good, man. That was the frame that started it all. <laughs> Yeah, you've probably heard of Pepe, haven't you? It's a happy little frog. You like drinking and hanging out. Well, look, to recap, after the meme had been appropriated by the alt-right in the early 2010s, a community of artists from all over the world started working together to try, and in the words of one of them, ICQ, take it back. That ultimately led to rare Pepe's being sold as NFTs, the first of which was mined in a Bitcoin block 428919 on September the 13th, 2016, and subsequently sold on Counterparty. Art blogger, early NFT collector, and one of the first to talk about the crypto art movement, a guy called Jason Bailey, said in 2018, the rare Pepe meme is, quote, the real origin of much of crypto art's culture, aesthetic, and technology. Those rare Pepe's also predated the release of NFTs on Ethereum, but it was the move to this blockchain that saw the crypto art movement quickly swell. Before long, artists like A Lot of Money, Puck, and Primal Cypher began making a name for themselves with work that wasn't just about Bitcoin and Ethereum, it was also being sold on the blockchain as well. By early 2021, people like Elliot Levy at the Concordian were talking about a counterculture movement against the traditional art world. It wasn't until late 2020, though, that things really took off. According to Nifty Gateway, this is when sales volumes for NFTs were soaring and artists, like so many others, were cashing in on NFT mania. That culminated in key players in the space making some very big waves. A digital artwork by a relatively unknown American artist known as Beeple. The piece is called Every Days, the first 5,000 days, who's now the third most valuable living artist behind Jeff Koons and Dave Hockney in the world. Oh my gosh. Uh, as of six months ago, what? Beeple had yet to sell any work. The sale of Beeple's Every Days, the first 5,000 days made people outside the world of NFTs and crypto sit up and pay attention. 69 million. I think it probably means digital art is here to stay. The headline, of course, was the sale amount. But in the words of Noah Davis, specialist in post-war and contemporary art at Christie's in New York, it was also a huge first for Christie's itself. It made the company the first auction house to offer a purely digital work with a unique NFT and the first to accept a cryptocurrency, in this case Ethereum, as payment for it. Speaking to Business Insider, Ryoma Ito, co-founder of Maker's Place, said that the Beeple sale was the game changer for the movement. The big catalyst was the Christie's auction. Um, that announcement brought in a lot of visibility in so many different channels. Christie's competitor Sotheby's wasn't far behind selling $17 million worth of art by Puck a month later. By then, the crypto art movement had well and truly made its mark and been subsumed into the broader conversation around generative art and the blockchain. And that, thanks to a humble cartoon frog, has changed the economy and nature of the art world forever.